Hello everybody, it's Mrs. Pound. Welcome back to chapter 3.1 about solutions. Today we're going to take a look at section 3.14 on solubility and concentration. Our objectives are going to calculate the concentration of a solution, to classify solutions according to their concentrations, and compare the solubility of gases to liquids and solids. So the first thing we have to do is to define solubility and concentration. Solubility is a measure of the amount of solute needed to make a saturated solution using a given amount of solvent. And concentration is a measure of the amount of solute dissolved in a certain amount of solvent. So we can find the concentration using a calculation. Now, I forgot to leave space for this. This was kind of an afterthought in your notes. So what I want you to do is you have a lot of space at the end of your last section on oceans and salt water. So go ahead back to the end of that section and make a note that these notes go with concentration. So go ahead and write down what it says on this slide. Uh, the formula for calculating concentration is the amount of solute over the solvent times 100%. This is a classic fraction type equation where we do the part over the whole times percent. So uh, an example of a problem would be given a 300 milliliter solution of lemonade and a 3 milliliters of it is lemon juice, what is the concentration? Go ahead and write out this whole problem because this is an example similar to what you'll see on your test. So the first thing we do is we write down the equation, solute over solvent times 100%. Then we think about the numbers that we have to plug in. So we think the solute is the part, it's the smaller number. So that is the three milliliters and the solvent is the whole which is the 300 milliliters. It's the larger number. So when we plug those in, we have 3 milliliters over 300 milliliters times 100%. That gives us 0 0.01 times 100, which is 1%. And this is a lot like, I always think of these as like money, guys. So think of if you had 1 cent, just take out the per part. If you had one cent, you would write that in decimal form as 0 .01 um, for money. Now, another example, and go ahead and write down this problem too, is given a 400 milliliter solution of lemonade and 40 milliliters of it is lemon juice, what is the concentration? So again, write down your formula, solute over solvent times 100%, and think, which is the solute and which is the solvent. Solute is the lower number, it's 40 milliliters, so we put that on the top, and the solvent is the larger number, the 400 milliliters, so we put that on the bottom. So that gives us this, 40 milliliters divided by 400 milliliters times 100. <laughs> that gives us 0 0.10 times 100%, which equals 10%. So which solution has a greater concentration? The second, which has a 10% concentration. How much greater? We just subtract. 10% minus 1% equals 9%. So the second solution is 9% more concentrated. So let's take a look at how we can classify different solutions. So we can have a dilute solution. This is a solution containing a small amount of solute. And I'm sure you've made some of these solutions before. Like if we're talking lemonade, this would be really weak lemonade. Wouldn't have much taste to it. It wouldn't be very sweet. It would be very weak and you'd be thinking, hmm, I need to add sugar and maybe a little more lemon juice to this. You can have a concentrated solution. This is a solution containing a large amount of solute. This might even be too sweet and too lemony. You can also have a saturated solution. This is a solution containing the maximum amount of a solute that a solvent can hold at a given temperature and pressure. This kind of goes along with our experiments we did the other day. The person who was stirring and adding 
sugar until they couldn't really add any more. They were making a saturated solution and we might have been able to get more sugar in there. So this would be like if you were stirring sugar into something and you added it and added it and added it till you couldn't add any more when there was some still on the bottom. There are also supersaturated solutions. This is a solution that contains more dissolved solute than a normal saturated solution under the same conditions. How we would make one of these solutions is we would do something like we would heat up the water and we would add solute until we couldn't add any more and then we would let it cool and a lot of times that extra solute will still stay in solution so we have a super saturated solution. This is oftentimes how we make crystals. You can make crystals out of super saturated solutions. Another way to do this is if we were dissolving gases we would put them under higher pressure and we could super saturate that solution. So the relationship between temperature and gas solubility is, it's the exact opposite as for our solids. Remember, when we increase the temperature for our sugar, we could add more. Well, as the temperature increases for uh, gases, the solubility decreases. Now, our explanation for solids was because there's more contact with those molecules, so they'll dissolve more. Well, for gases, they're already pretty high energy. So you make them go even faster, and they will escape from the solvent. A lot like in the picture in the background. I have, uh, you can see the bubbles coming off. So they will escape if the temperature increases. So a warm bottle of soda loses its fizz faster than a cold bottle of soda because carbon dioxide is less soluble in warm water than in cold water. So you want to keep your open bottle of soda uh, fizzy, you better put it in the fridge. Now, Henry's Law is as the pressure on a gas increases, its solubility increases. And I still have our soda in the background because this has also to do with soda. It's how it's made. They pump carbon dioxide gas into it with under high pressure to make it more soluble in the liquid, in the water. Okay, and also you notice that when you open a bottle of soda, there's that psh, okay, there's that release of pressure and gas comes out. Because you're releasing the pressure, the gas is then less soluble and it comes out of the bottle. Henry's Law also explains decompression sickness. So what is decompression sickness? Decompression sickness is when a diver comes up, excess nitrogen dissolved in his blood expands in the bloodstream too quickly and clogs arteries and veins. It's very painful, actually. This has to do with Henry's Law. And what it has to do with Henry's Law is that as the diver goes down, the pressure on the diver increases so more gas dissolves in the blood. As the diver comes up, the pressure decreases, so the solubility of the gas decreases and comes out of the blood. Now, this only happens if a diver comes up too quickly. If there's some kind of emergency, they're running low on oxygen, they might come up too quickly. Otherwise, divers actually have to pay very close attention to the amount of oxygen they have in their tanks. And they have special tables that tell them for the, for the depth of how far they're diving, how much time they have to allow to come up. If they come up gradually, this is not an issue. It will allow the time for an equilibrium to be established in their blood, so they have to be very careful to come up slowly. Um, now, if there's an emergency and they have to come up too quickly, uh, decompression sickness is also sometimes called the bends because it is very painful and it makes you uh, bend uh, your body over and double over in pain, basically. Um, and so what they have to do is they have to get to them to a hospital that has a hyperbolic chamber. A hyperbolic chamber, what it does is they can put the individual under very high pressure like they would be in the ocean. And the reason you're under high pressure in the ocean is because there's a lot of water on top of you pressing you down. So they put them in high pressure in this chamber and then they slowly release the pressure 
to imitate what would have happened in the ocean if they had come up more slowly. So our objectives are to calculate the concentration, we're to calculate the concentration of a solution, to classify solutions according to their concentrations, and to compare the solubility of gases to liquids and solids. So don't forget your five questions, and I will be back with, I believe, one more section to this chapter.